Hey everyone, Wazoo here, and um, today we are going to be talking about embedded servers in Java Spring Boot. Oh, this is going to be really cool. So when you create a default Spring Boot project through either start.spring.io or maybe through your favorite IDE like IntelliJ, something like that, the Spring Boot automatically comes prepackaged with the Tomcat web server. So in this episode, we're going to go through how to change that and take advantage of other servers that also make use of this, the Java servlet specification among other uh, Java web server improvements, enhancements. And that way, depending on your situation, depending on your cloud environment or where you've got these servers deployed to, you can pick and choose the best one for the job. Awesome. Let's get going. So as you see here, we're on start.spring.io. We're just going to create a very basic project, a Maven Java project. We're going to be using 2.6.7 of Spring Boot. And let's go ahead and create a, a new artifact for this. And we're just going to call this uh, a nice and easy Spring Boot uh, web server. Web servers, we'll just call it web servers. Okay and we'll scroll down we'll just make this a jar file we'll be using java 18 for this one and for dependencies all we're going to be adding is spring boot dev tools and spring web and that's it let's go ahead and generate that project so i'm going to extract this to somewhere in my hard drive and open it right up in visual studio code okay as you can see here i've got visual studio code up and running and i've opened up the project it's just activating this. Also, how are you doing everyone? Hope you're having a decent day wherever you are in the world. And ready to have some fun with Java Spring Boot. Okay, it looks like we got the extensions up and running for Spring Boot dashboard. Let's go ahead and start it up. And you will see here, hopefully it's easier to pick up, okay. So here, see here, we've got a, a, a log message saying Tomcat started on port 8080. So by default, as I just mentioned before, uh, Spring Boot comes prepackaged with the Tomcat web server. So that when you package your, up your jar file, you can just run it as is, and the Tomcat embedded server will take care of it. Um, do we need to, we don't even really need to test it. It's on port 8080 and you get, we get the familiar white label error message uh, if we go to that right now. So let's go ahead and stop it. And what we're gonna do is go back to our POM XML. And what we wanna do is we wanna bring in uh, another new, or not another, but a new, um, a new dependency, a new Maven dependency to handle a different embedded web server. So first, uh, oops, what's this? Do you wanna synchronize the Java class path? Okay, whatever. Um, so first, one of the one of the major strengths I like about Java Spring Boot is its use of dependency injection, and this is sort of a if you haven't, if you're not really familiar with the term, this is a concept where um, Spring Boot, or I, I mean, I guess even to some extent Java itself, it allows you to sort of plug and play or plug and plug and pray, uh, whatever whatever comes easier in your project. Uh, depending on the size of your of your Java project, but joking aside, it's it's set up so that you you take advantage of a system where you can swap components in and out, and that's kind of what these uh, dependencies are exposed through through Java Spring Boot. So for a web server, uh, we really don't have to do anything other than bring in a new dependency in our pom.xml file, and that'll take care of automatically Spring Boot will take care of all the work of shifting over to making use of a new embedded web server or whatever dependency it is that we just pulled in. Um, for example, this, this, this is why it, it's, a, it's a great use of technology, Spring Boot technology. For example, if, you, if you're writing your uh, Spring data layer to be using something like MySQL, and then all of a sudden you want to deploy this application to an environment which only uses Postgres. So luckily there's a dependency to set up the, the, the Postgres and then it will 
it, so long as you haven't set up anything that's MySQL specific anywhere else, Java Spring will take care of swapping out the MySQL components with Postgres, which I think is uh, a really cool feature, definitely really handy. So let's go ahead and let's add a dependency. And what we're gonna do is our first one is gonna be using the Jetty, the Jetty web server. So we are going to be using a group ID of org spring framework dot boot. And then we were gonna, uh, it's just so weird in this giant text that I have to use. Artifact ID of spring boot starter jetty. Now, one thing to remember or to, to point out is that because Tomcat is automatically included in the in the uh, starter web, then what we have to do is set up an exclusion so that it it filters out everything Tomcat in order to make use of Jetty. So let's go ahead and create an exclusion here, and then we want to use a group ID of org spring framework boot. And then we want to exclude the artifact ID of spring boot starter Tomcat. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. So now we've got this all set up where we're using the Jetty server now. So let's go ahead and try and start it up and hopefully it will pull everything down again. And as you can see in our log message, in our info message, sorry, the Jetty server started on port 8080, whereas in our last message, we saw that it was the Tomcat. So let's go ahead and open up a browser just to show the difference, if there is one, and there shouldn't be one. Ta-da! We get the same error message as I would expect. Cool. So now there's one more that we can make use of, and this is a embedded server called Undertow. So let's go ahead and stop, stop the that server from running, and let's go back to our POM XML file. Let's shrink that down a little bit here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we'll keep that. Uh, we'll we'll just comment out this dependency. Um, just for future fun if you want to use it and we'll cut and paste it and we'll declare undertow instead so we will be using spring boot starter undertow okay and well you know again as before we have to leave in this exclusion in order to make sure that the tomcat the embedded tomcat web server is kind of filtered out of our uh, spring boot uh, dependencies so let's go ahead and start this one up. Same deal. Let's open this up a little bit. And now notice this info message. The undertow server started on port 8080. And just for completeness sake, let's go back and demonstrate port 8080. And of course, we get our expected white label error page. So that's pretty cool. Uh, within just a few lines of XML in the palm.xml file, we were able to set up different embedded servers, whatever one we want to use uh, for our environment. And so it's time for a surprise bonus. So it is possible to set up no embedded server. So if we if we remove all dependencies, so let's comment them all out. So we've got no embedded web server defined here. We've excluded the Tomcat one here, so it's not bringing it in uh, um, in any dependency list. And then we go into our application.properties, so source, main, resources, application.properties, and we use spring, the key name is spring.main web application type equals none 
and so we will we will not start up any web server so let's see what happens so we have got a Spring Boot server up and running with no embedded web application. Now, what possible environments or application type would you be writing in order to not need a web application? Um, that is a really good question. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Maybe if you were just creating a, oh, if you were creating a pure, uh, pure middleware. So if you're creating something using uh, messaging, um, like Rabbit, RabbitMQ, something like that, um, some type of message queue service, some type of uh, middle middle layer, middleware layer, sorry, middleware layer, which doesn't require any access through uh, web, then you you may want to take a look at being able to comment out or remove any web application being ex embedded web application server being exposed through your Spring Boot app. Okay, so another tip that we can use is while we're here in the application properties file, we can not only disable our web application, our embedded web server, but we can change the port that it's being hosted on. So let's go ahead and comment this out. And let's go back in the POM XML and let's uncomment Undertow again. So let's restore the Undertow server and go back in application properties. And by default, the uh, server port is on port 8080. So what we can do here is let's go ahead and change this to, let's say 3000. Okay, and then let's go ahead and start it up. And it will load up and Undertow started on port 3000. So let's go into our browser and just verify that nothing is on port 8080. Okay, nothing is there. And, but on 3000, we've got our white label error page. Pretty rad. There's another trick here where if we want to randomize the server port, for some reason, depending on your environment. Maybe you don't care about what port it's served on. If you give the server port as a zero, the value for server port as a zero, then it will randomly come up with a port for you. So let's see what we get this time. So we get Undertow started on port 59318. So let's open up 59318. Whoops, localhost 59318. Very cool. I like that. That's a neat little feature to neat little feature to have. Cool. So that's it for this episode. I hope you had a lot of fun and enjoyed this little adventure into embedded web servers in Spring Boot. And I'll see you in the next one. Like the video if you if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends. And have a good day wherever you are in the world. Bye, my friends. Peace.